Guys, how's everyone doing today? Um, before we go into questions, I want to start out just offering our prayers uh, to the family of Coach Fossil. Uh, obviously, very sadly, he passed away last night. Uh, look, it's a small league, you know, from inside this building where his impact was directly felt and carries over through the history of our organization uh, to coaches around the league who work together and have good relationships. A lot of respect for his son, uh, John Bones Fossil down in Dallas. Very good relationship with him. Um, just all the respect in the world for what they're doing. And, um, you know, obviously our thoughts and prayers with his family and uh, the impact he made here for the Giants, you know, something we talk about as a team and uh, we'll make sure we reflect on today. Uh, that being said, uh, in reference to minicamp, any questions that you may have, I'll answer right now. Bruce Beck. Joe, does, does this minicamp in some way serve as a springboard for the season? Do you build the foundations that are necessary for the, for the year in some regards? I think it's just another opportunity for us to really hit the field. And, you know, again, the number one focus is building our football movement, get the players in shape, give them really more exposure to our techniques, our systems, and our schemes on the field. You know, what I really like this to do is just give these guys a jump start carrying into the five week break until we hit back to training camp, that they've got a feel for what they have to work on in that absence, and then also a feel for where their conditioning and overall shape and strength are right now that they have to work on throughout the summer. Hey, hey Joe, just would you? Would you just share with us what an honor it is to coach this franchise, uh, you know, following the passing of Coach Fossil, as you talked about? Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts in that regard. You know, this was something I addressed uh, kind of early on in my tenure here, Bruce, in terms of, you know, when I was fortunate enough to get the phone call to even interview for this job, um, I knew right away this job was not like every other team in the league. And to me, that reflects directly on the history of the team, the impact it's had throughout the history of the league and the people who have come before us. That's something we stress on a daily basis with our players and our coaches to understand the people who have been in this building and have made an impact on the field uh, before we came here. Uh, it's our responsibility to not only know their history, but also you know carry out with class the way that they operated in. It's important to represent the uh, Marin Tisch families accordingly. It's important to represent all the former players and coaches accordingly. Um, obviously, with the passing of coach last night, that's something that makes you kind of sit back and reflect. It brings up a lot of great coaches who have been through here. Uh, look, it's definitely an honor to be in the same position as all those coaches. I'm a far away from achieving anything they have at this point. I've got a lot of work to do myself, uh, but I'm proud to be able to be in this position, have the opportunity to come to work every day, be a New York Giant, work for this great city and this great organization. Doug, Hey, Joe. I know, you know, a decent amount of players chose not to come to the voluntary stuff, but Kadarius was the only rookie. I'm curious if you can shed any light on why he wasn't participating. Uh, for, I mean, look, Kadarius was here through a portion of the period. And not all of our players are on the field every day due to one reason or another. Uh, I would say that in terms of the voluntary portion of spring, I'm not going to comment on any attendance of who was or was not here across the board. That's something I expressed to my team early in this process. We're going to work with every player we could virtually, in person, whatever was available to us. I think all of our guys have done a good job of working getting to this point. Uh, I'm excited about working with everybody on the field today, and uh, I'm excited to work with Kadarius on the field today as well. Pat Leonard. Joe, in building the offense and in trying to become a top offense in the NFL in 2021, how can you use this week or what do you want to accomplish this week on the offensive side of the ball to know what you have going into training camp and how can you set yourself up for the kind of season you want to have on offense? Well, in terms of knowing what we have, we're really not going to know that, Pat, until we get into training camp. The pads are on. We're playing actual football. Uh, when we get into the preseason games, competitive practices, when we get to some of those in training camp, you know, those will definitely be vehicles for us to really evaluate our team in competition. You know, at this point right here, this is all about learning. This is about fundamentals, and this is about conditioning and football movement, get them in. Again, for our offense, every opportunity they have, Pat, to get together, work on timing in the passing game, that's critical. Every opportunity our offensive line has the opportunity to work together and gain chemistry to the communication and the field being next to each other and picking up blitz concepts, different rush concepts. We're executing run blocking assignments together. Those are always things we have to learn from. You know, the, it's invaluable just having meeting time and being in the same room as opposed to Zoom. Uh, it's invaluable being on the field together. And not only the plays you execute correctly, but also the mistakes you make to know how that felt and how you have to correct those. All right. And then you developing chemistry with the players around you going forward. So in terms of our offense, Pat, I think we're just in the infantile stages right now. Obviously, we're just working on knowing our roster as well as we can. We have some new guys that we really have to evaluate. We have things we know about them from previous teams or college experience. And then we've got to get them on our field and really just keep working with them until we learn them 
inside now. It's as much as the mental part of it, as much as, you know, their understanding of the game, how we can best teach them and help them. And then, look, that should all carry in to give us a good jump start in a training camp. But I don't see this as being a necessary springboard or anything. It's hard to go ahead and evaluate your team uh, when they're not in football pads. Justin. Hi, Joe. Following up on that, how valuable is this period for the rookies? And what are you looking for in this mandatory period to see, I guess, how they stack up against the veterans? Yeah, I'd say overall, compared to the OTAs that we've been in before, there's really not much of a difference. It's a little bit longer in a day. We have longer meetings, more view time on the back end. We'll be on the field a little bit longer. But in terms of the actual what they're going to be doing in practice, there's not a great deal of difference in what they've been doing for the last two weeks in OTAs already. The focus for us is still going to be on the football movement, you know, group teach periods. Or I get some 11 on 11 work at controlled tempo to make sure that we're at least getting the feel of all 22 on the field. You know, one thing we can work on this time of year that you don't need pads for is communication. To me, with the rookies, one of the most important things they can get right now is the communication with the vets, guys who understand our systems a little better, have a little more experience within what we're doing, you know, and getting used to being on the field and talking with it. And again, you got to remember, when these guys got here, you know, a few weeks back, they are naturally just the shy guys walking down the hallway trying to learn everyone's faces and names. So for them, it's not natural to just sit down, have a conversation, and be on the same page. So we try to bridge that gap as much as we can. This is part of the process to make sure when they're on the field, there's no hesitation in having the confidence to speak up and make the right check, put yourself in the right position to make the play and be all 11 on the same page. You know, in terms of this time of the spring overall for the rookies, this is really invaluable. I mean, the more time you get with them right here just to help them catch up, really the goal for the rookies this time of year is just give them an opportunity when they get into training camp to be able to compete with the vets in front of them. The reality is every vet in this league has an advantage over every rookie based on maturity level, experience, or expertise. They know how to handle their body better. They've seen NFL football. They know the speed of the game. The advantage rookies and young players have is they're younger, they're generally healthier, okay, and they recover faster with their young bodies. That's generally their, you know, advantage right now. They've got to mentally catch up, okay, and technically catch up on the field with the fundamentals to be able to compete with our vets when we get to training camp. Of course. Hey, Joe. Um, hey, Paul. Uh, you you uh, you spoke a little bit about um, Kenny Galladay last week. I just want to know specifically the size and his length. Um, do you feel that was missing from the offense? Um, what can that do to help a quarterback and an offense? And have you seen anything on the field yet in these early stages that makes you think this guy's a long guy? We can throw the ball up there for him. Well, I think the second you stand next to him, you understand that he's a long guy who you can throw the ball to. And definitely that showed up on his previous tape ball before we got him here. So there's enough evidence of his experience in the league that we know that about him. In terms of how that can help a team, I think it only helps as well as you can use it to your advantage. There's a lot of tall guys in this league who can't create separation and can't make contested catches. There's a lot of players you would you know, maybe say are a little bit on the shorter side who are very elusive. They're great at getting open at the catch point. They're great at securing the ball and getting vertical with the ball to gain yards. To me, it's all about your individual skill set, Paul, and how you can use it. I think there's enough evidence with Kenny that we're going to work to use him to his strengths. Uh, we plan on him having impact, but again, that's going to be based on how he produces on a daily basis. Uh, we have high expectations for all of our players. He's no different. And you know, we're going to give him the opportunity to work with them and play within our systems and give him the opportunity to make plays. Thanks, Joe. That. Hey, Joe. Um, I, was, I, know, I know a lot of the defensive backs weren't at the voluntary OTAs, but I know a lot of those guys got together down in Florida with Logan Ryan and, and the group. Like, how valuable is it for those guys to get together away from uh, – away from this facility and kind of bond in that way. Cause I know you talked about building chemistry is important this time of the year. Yeah, I, th I think that's great, Zach. I mean, that was definitely at a point in the year where we couldn't even have the availability of having them on our own facility and work with them. I think between Logan getting guys together down in Florida, Dan getting guys together at, you know, whether it's Arizona, Charlotte, multiple places around the year, I think a couple of our D linemen got together for some different, you know, events as well, football related, you know, look, the more your team can be together and bond and build chemistry and work together, the better that is for your locker room. OK, we need a strong locker room to have a successful team. And it's one thing we've really emphasized in building here. We've got great character on our team right now. I love coming to work and working with all these guys right here. But it shows up when they're away from the facility in their work ethic and they know what to expect when they come back. Last one here, Rock. Joe, uh, what's Saquon's status? Where, where is he in his rehab? And, and what are your expectations of him over the next couple of months, I guess? Yeah, I'll start with in terms of where he's at right now, Tom. I mean, I'll say this. He comes in every day. He really attacks every day from a rehab standpoint. He's had a phenomenal attitude and great motivation this entire way through. He's been tremendously positive. You know, we're going to make sure that we take Saquon's rehab at the correct rate for his individual body and injury. Um, it's not, you know, any mirror of anybody else's injury out there. We've got to make sure that we let him get at his pace and we put him on the field 
that he can play 100% aggressive and confident. That he can go out there and he's going to play safe and he can play effective. But, you know, look, typically we do Saquon's rehab in the morning before practice. So when the players get out there, he's already been off the field. Um, a lot of times he's not out there when you guys are out there because that's what we're doing. We're getting a lot of our rehab done early during some of the meeting time. And then during practice, our trainers are available for our players on the field. Um, couldn't be happier with how he's working. He's shown a tremendous amount of leadership this offseason. I know he's chomping a bit to get back on the field. Uh, but we're going to let him take it day by day. He's been getting better every day working. Thanks, Coach. Do you also – I'm sorry, can I, can I just ask one more? Do, do you have any numbers, Joe, on uh, how many players are vaccinated? I know I know. I don't want to ask for names and go down the list, but you know, what percentage are you at right now, and, and where do you want to be when training camp starts in terms of that? Look, in terms of all that, we're going to work everything to be within league rules and do whatever we have to do, okay? We've got a great medical staff here, Ronnie Barnes and his staff and our doctors – I've done a tremendous job communicating with our players, educating our players, making any medical treatment vaccine available when they need it. Uh, look, at this point, players have a decision they can make individually. Uh, as a team, we're going to work within the protocols designated by the league. Some guys are vaccinated. Some guys are not vaccinated. That changes the protocols a little bit individually. But we're going to operate as a team according to the rules, and we're going to work on forward with that, Tom. I don't have a specific number for you right now. Uh, I don't want to get in the business, to be honest with you, Tom, of you know putting out percentages or numbers, whatever that is. Uh, we're just going to operate within the rules and make sure we do our best as a team.